Hi everyone, Ian back with another video on Python package management today. Um, I'm going to be talking about how you can use pipm for your package management for Python applications. You might remember in my last uh, virtual environment tutorial uh, I demonstrated how you can use pip and the VM module to manage packages. Here we're going to be using pipenv and pipenv makes a lot of the commands that we were using in that tutorial a lot easier by merging a lot of the boilerplate that you needed to do um, into a single command. It's built on borrowing a lot of the behavior from other Python uh, other package management tools like npm and yarn um, but then applying them to python so it gives us these kind of a nice way of um, interacting with the, our dependencies so yeah with that said uh, let's get on with the tutorial in the last tutorial we kind of covered why you might not want to be installing or why you would want to be using uh, virtual environments in the first place. And I'm just going to cover quickly, uh, review quickly why that is the case. So in a situation where we aren't using virtual environments, we'd only ever be able to install a single version of a library. And that's a problem if we've got multiple projects on one machine and we want to have different dependencies and different versions of dependencies for each of those projects. So this is what virtual environments allow us to do. We are then able to kind of wrap up all our dependencies for a particular project in a virtual environment so they can then be available for that project and that project only and they are isolated from the rest of the projects on our machine. If we were using just a single global version we'd only ever be able to install a single version of any one dependency, which isn't doesn't means that our projects are very limited. Okay, so for this, uh, you're going to need to install pipenv. I've already got this installed. You can install it through using brew or, or your whatever your machine is using. So if you're on Linux, maybe apt. And I've actually installed this using pipx on my machine, so that's another tool that I'll talk about in a future tutorial. But we can see here that I'm just in a directory with no dependencies whatsoever. There's nothing going on, it's an empty directory. So for the first thing we can do is install a library. So we're going to install requests. And with pipenv, you just do pipenv install requests. And you can see a few things going on here. We've got it using the default version of Python on my machine, which is 394. It's what I'm set this to use. And we can see that we have created a, both a pip file and a pip file.lock. So the pip file describes the dependencies that have been installed. So here we've got requests. Um, and it describes the Python version that we're using, so 3.9. But we've also got the pip file.lock, which describes all the dependencies of our dependencies. So you can see here there are a load of other packages that are being installed that are dependencies of requests. So we also we can see all of those and the exact versions of them and the hashes and everything that they're using. And the reason why we have this lock file is so that we can produce a deterministic build or a reproducible build so that we know exactly what versions of every single library that we have installed. You can see that we didn't specify a particular version and so requests, uh, so pivhamv have just installed requests at the highest version, the latest version that you can find. So this has also created our virtual environment for us. So we can see here virtual env location and we can see where its point is on our machine. Um, if we also want, if we ever want to do that within pipenv itself and uh, find it on the command line, we can just do pipenv vm, oh, pipenv vn, and it spits it out on the command line. It's given us a random project name. So with uh, vm, we would have had to specify the name for our vm, but we've been given a a random one here that mimics what our project, our folder name is uh, appended with some random characters. 
So this is quite nice because uh, we no longer have to freeze out dependencies as a requirements file and we're able to um, update it ourselves when we're adding packages and when we're removing packages. So if I go ahead and um, remove that package, or in fact, it's uninstall and say remove. I have to remember the actual command syntax. Yeah. And so we can see that now we've still got those files, but there's nothing in there. They've, they've removed the fancy. So let's put that back in. The other thing we can do, you can see we've got dev packages listed here, is that we can install packages um, that are dev dependencies. So pip env, say we wanted to have a test library like pytest, we specify that it's a dev library. And then when that's installed, we can see that our pip lock and everything has been updated. Um, we can see that pytest has been added to that file as well. So. Um, we've got a few ways of interacting with this locally. So we could uh, move into the shell itself. So we can, or in, in, we could create a shell, sorry. And then that's activated. So if we um, use the Python version there, we can see that the 394, which is what was used. And in fact, that's the global version as well. Um, but if we call Python and try and import requests, it has no problem doing that. Whereas if we were doing it um, when we are not within the shell, we get a module not found error. So that's quite nice. Um, we, I'm gonna uh, create a, share, a script to demonstrate the next thing. So if we write a script which uses requests, so our so we're just going to pull a random web page. So let's use GitHub. Let's uh, make HTTPS, even though it probably doesn't matter. And then we're just going to print out the status code. And just what it returns us. And um, yes, yeah, so we were able to, we can run that within the shell. So we pip env shell again. And then if we do Python script, oh, dot py. So it spat back our page, is what we expected. Um, the other way of doing this would be to use the run command. So we can just do pip env run, and then we're, that would be executed within the shell, so we'd need to do python script.py. So you can see we get the same thing, but we haven't had to act, activate the shell in that case. If we wanted to install a particular version of a module, then we can pin it using this syntax. So here we're going to we can see that the version that we've got installed at the moment by default is 2251. So we're going to use an older version and uh, pipm install rather rather than just pipm requests. And we can see that request is now dropped to 220. And in our pip file, it's now pinned a particular version. Um, so we can install any particular version, even if we don't want the latest version, we can drop back to an older one. The other thing that's quite nice about this is as well that uh, pip env will allow us to check our dependencies. So it can check if there's issues with them or if there's issues with the dependencies of our dependencies. So if we do pip env check, we can see that having installed that older module, the older version of requests, we've actually got an issue now. 
um, saying that there's a CRLF, um, so carriage return line feed, I believe that is, injection issue. So we probably don't want to install that version. So we could probably drop this back to the latest. And if we just do pipm install then, pipm should understand that everything's out of date and that we need to update it again. And so it updates the lock file and we can see the latest version again. Something else that's quite nice is that if we wanted to use a particular version, we can see that we defaulted to the 3.9 version. We can specify that. So as well as that, let's first of all remove. So we can use the room command to remove our virtual environment. So we have access to that and we can just go ahead and remove it. So now we have no virtual environment. We can delete the lock file that we've already had. And let's delete the pip file as well. And so now if I do pip env install using a particular version of Python and let's say Python 3.8, Um, and one of our dependencies, uh, let's go back for requests. In fact, let's do pipm There you go. Okay, just missing the extra hyphen there. So our pip file has been created, but we've not installed anything. So if we install requests, you see that we've used 3.8.7 in that case. So if we use an older version of Python that's also available on the machine. And we've created this pip file again, and we're still able to get the latest version because requests is compatible with 3.8. So we can also get a nice graph of dependency information. So you can see what is installed underneath requests. And uh, pivm also allows us to install and update easily. So if we did pivm update, it would update any re uh, requirements, any modules that we got installed to the latest versions. Um, obviously, we've only got requests installed there, so it hasn't updated anything. And we also still have access to all our pip commands within our virtual environment. So we can do pip env run and then whatever our pip command is. So we can do freeze. And we can see that it's in a syntax for a requirements file. So we could even spit that out to a requirements file. And then our requirements have been uh, created for use with a pip style environment, uh, pip only style environment. The pip env is also able to read the requirements file. So if we're able, if we remove the vm again, and we remove the pip file. and the pip file lock. So we come back to just our requirements file that we had before. We can do pip env install dash r requirements.txt. So now it's installing from the requirements file. So if we've got an old style requirements file for our project, we're able to easily convert it to a pip file. Um, and that all those versions have then been pinned because that's what the requirements file described in the pip file. So yeah, I thought that was good uh, kind of progression from the VM module that we were talking about before in our other tutorial. Um, I mostly use pipm for majority of the work that I do in Python. Uh, there are other um, Python 
packaging tools that we will talk about in another pro uh, tutorial. And yeah, I hope that's been useful to you. If you've enjoyed it, then uh, please let me know. And if you think you know somebody else who might enjoy it, please share it with them. Um, but until next time, I will see you later. All right, bye.